The Little Peach Who Spoke Italian by Jade Maitre Tiberius Copernicus loved plants. He loved the way they grew, from very small to big and green. He loved smelling flowers and looking at all their different colours. He loved tasting the ones that were meant to be eaten. Mint leaves had a sharp, sweet taste. Basil was earthy and yummy. Rosemary smelled like remembering. He loved lining up the pots in colourful rows and ordering them, from shortest to tallest, from bushiest to slimmest, from hairiest to sleekest. But what Tiberius Copernicus liked best was to collect the seeds of fruits and vegetables after he'd eaten them. He collected apple seeds and orange seeds. He collected mandarin seeds and watermelon seeds. He collected avocado seeds and mango seeds. If bananas had hard seeds, he would have collected them too. One day, Tiberius Copernicus and his family went on a drive to Italy. It was very hot in Italy because it was the summertime. On the beach, Tiberius Copernicus ate gelato and pizzas and tomatoes with basil and olive oil. There were no seeds in any of these things, except in the tomatoes, which were too slippery to catch. But one day, Tiberius Copernicus ate a peach. It was covered with a soft down. It was so sweet and juicy. After he'd eaten it, Tiberius looked at the little peach stone left over in his hand. Throw it away, said Mummy. Throw it away, said Daddy. But Tiberius Copernicus didn't throw it away. He tucked it into his fist and wouldn't open it for anybody. I want to plant it, he said. Plant it, said his Mummy. We can't plant it. We're on holidays. But Tiberius Copernicus refused to go anywhere unless he could take his little peach stone with him. I want to take it home with us said Tiberius Copernicus. Mummy and Daddy looked at Tiberius Copernicus's face. It was a face that meant what it said. So Daddy found a pot. They put some dirt in it and planted the little peach stone. It looked comfortable in the pot. They gave it some water and put its bottom in a plastic bag in case it leaked in the car. Tiberius Copernicus nursed it in his lap all the way around Italy. Every time they stopped the car, Tiberius Copernicus took the pot filled with dirt and put it somewhere sunny. He thought the little peach stone might like to talk to the other plants they saw there. But what will your little peach stone do when we arrive back at home, asked Mummy. He will speak Italian and the other plants won't understand him. I will talk to him, said Tiberius Copernicus. He kissed the side of the pot and hugged the stone close to him but inside something was starting to worry. What if the peach stone was lonely back at home? Tiberius Copernicus knew there was only one thing to do. He would have to learn Italian. The next day they went swimming at a beach, La Spiaggia. He splashed the little peach stone with water, aqua. They made a sand castle, un castello di sabbia. And the whole day, the little peach stone was warmed by the lovely sun, il sole, on its pot. At the end of the day, Tiberius Copernicus held the pot close to him and said, Ti amo, little peach stone. And like this, Tiberius Copernicus began to learn Italian. He learned that il cielo means the sky, and un giardino means a garden, and gli alberi means the trees. He tried to speak with the little peach stone about the things it would understand and be interested in because that's what we do with people we love. One morning, towards the end of their holidays, Tiberius Copernicus went in a boat in a lake on top of a mountain. When he came back in, he dried off and put his clothes back on. When the whole family was back in the car and had been driving for many hours, Tiberius Copernicus suddenly remembered what he had forgotten at the lake. My little peach seed, he cried, and then he cried some more because he had left the little stone in its pot all the way back at the lake. It was too far to go back. 
Tiberius Copernicus felt very lonely, solitario, for many days and nights. But then he thought about the little peach seed and wondered if another little boy, an Italian boy, might have found his peach friend and planted him somewhere sunny. After many days and nights, Tiberius Copernicus thought some more and knew that that must be what had happened. He thought about the day that he would return to Italy and see his little seed all fully grown and be able to kiss it and say, Ti amo. And that little peach tree might ruffle its leaves and drop into his hand a very sweet, perfectly round baby Italian peach to say thank you for believing in him all the way back when he was just a little peach stone. The End